in April of this year, and it also had received a conceptual approval in February of 2022 from the previous Art Commission. Is the applicant present or the just need a I think we're having some um, technical difficulties with the stream. So we have a couple people doing a few things here. So um, I, I believe we have uh, Jesse Belfast and Mike Bradelski. Does anyone else need to be promoted? Uh, Jesse or Mike, you should be able to unmute. Uh, yeah, I believe it's just the two of us. All right. Um, okay. Jesse was going to speak for us. Okay. I think I'm on and unmuted. Um, looks like my got to get my camera on. Um, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So um, I'll just give you a quick rundown on, on where we are since the, the last um, hearing that was held. Uh, we had approval for the location and number of signs with the uh, conceptual hearing. And so um, the new information we have to present now is the uh, drafts of the actual three signs. And um, on this location map here, we've got two locations where the signs will be installed. Location A, we have one sign that will be installed next to an existing sign on the Sisters Bridges. And then at location two, we have two signs that will be side by side. All of these signs will be mounted to the railing similar to the existing sign. And just um, conceptually, we try to match the design of these signs with the existing so that they would appear uniform, which means that uh, we, we matched the, the color, the font, uh, overall layout uh, with that sign standard that was, that was um, at this point, it's a, an earlier design that Friends of the Riverfront used. And I know there were some earlier questions uh, in the conceptual review about that. And as we go forward, if you've got follow-up, happy to answer those. Uh, so the next slide here is a rendering of what the installation will look like. Again, on the left, we've got the proposed sign. Uh, the existing sign here is to the right of the, sorry, to the right of the uh, proposed sign. And then uh, and location B, which is between um, the Warhol and Carson bridges. Um, you can see the new signs side by side there. So this is the uh, first sign, which is site A. Um, this sign's theme is to deal with um, the history of Allegheny County's uh, engineers, um, large construction of public works that went on in the 1920s and early 1930s, of which these bridges were a part. And it also deals um, in particular with um, Stanley Rausch, who was uh, an architect that participated uh, both with the sisters bridges and some other signature bridges throughout the county. Well, next slide, please. Uh, so this slide here uh, goes into further detail than what we have on the existing sign on the uh, technology and the historic significance of self-anchored suspension bridges. And we also compare um, uh, the bridges in Pittsburgh with some contemporary bridges um, both slightly before and slightly after uh, to give some context uh, internationally on this very rare bridge type and how our bridges in Pittsburgh fit in with that. And next slide. And this uh, third slide, this was specifically requested, this topic by the Pennsylvania State Historic Preservation Office. They wanted us to explain uh, what the current rehabilitation of the bridge um, meant to the historic significance, how we impacted certain elements of the bridge that are character defining. And so we explain a little bit about um, why the rehab was done, some improvements we made to the bridge to um, 
help reduce uh, future maintenance and deterioration uh, of some elements at the curb line. Uh, we talk about the connection methods, um, with rivets and bolts, and that in particular is, is an item uh, that's important because um, all of these signs are being done as mitigation for an adverse effect that was caused by the replacement of rivets with bolts. And so uh, the preservation office wanted us to call out that element in particular and explain to the public um, how this, this project changed that character defining feature of the bridge. And lastly, um, we've got um, a call out here on the lighting, which is uh, part of our restoration scheme. Uh, we, we replaced some 1970 era uh, highway style curb head lighting with uh, historically appropriate lighting. So that's an improvement that was made uh, based in part on historic precedent and we use context sensitive designs for that. Okay. I know we, we've got um, uh, that's sort of an abbreviated uh, overview of what we're doing, but uh, I'll be happy to answer any, any questions if we've got follow-ups from things that were raised at the uh, conceptual hearing um, last month. Um, and I submitted some written comments, but um, please let me know if you've got any other remarks on what was discussed. Uh, Commissioner Abdullah has their hand up. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I had a question as it relates to the, um, the signage. Um, <clears throat> I guess my, my question is more about accessibility in terms of, like, if a person with disabilities is blind, how would they be able to access the information on the sign? Is there, is there like, any audio portion that would go along with those? I assume not, but just asking to see, you know, if that's something that, you know, has gone into that 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 process. Um, no, we're not planning to do any audio component or any braille component. And we we did speak with uh, representatives at the National Park Service to get some insight on how they deal with this type of interpretive signage. And they typically don't include braille elements. And at this point, the um, the sign standards for the rest of the riverfront trails that are part of the Three Rivers Heritage System do not have any um, braille on the on the new signs that are being constructed elsewhere. And so the short answer is no, but we are being consistent with what's currently being done by Friends of the Riverfront. Okay, I guess I guess that 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 answers my question. I, I have one other follow up, just real quick. So, so in a, in a in a, in that case, what 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 um what would be proposed out a person who's blind? What would they do to be able to access the information? Well, at this time, we we don't have any way for them to access the information. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, a follow up to that question: Did the NPS provide any background as to like? I'm sure that's a part of discussion as to like what to include in sign standard. Did they say any reason why they don't, or if it's cost prohibitive, or if it like what is the general reason why that may not be a standard that NPS uses? Um, I I think it's it's partly um, for interpretive signs that are that are that are location based where you're where you're viewing what is being written about. Um, uh, they they don't have anything in their accessibility standards for Braille on that type of interpretive sign. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's because of of, of cost or it was a policy decision made for other reasons. Um, I, I, in signs that are located uh, indoors, like in the museum setting, uh, it is more common for um, park service or museums in general to have an audio component to those signs. Commissioner Ziegler, I think that your written comment um, revolved around this issue as well. Did you have any additional comment or question? No, that was, I was just wanting to know how 
how it was resolved and it sounds like it's not going to be included. Um, I did want to know were there any uh, community comments at the dam meeting in February? Yes, there were. Um, in fact, um, there were two comments that Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership brought up. The first was a similar real comment to what um, the Commissioner Abdullah just raised, and and we provided a similar response um, with the correspondence we did with Park Service. Um, we also uh, got a question from them regarding maintenance, and um, our reply was that uh, these signs uh, the, the county is constructing them as part of this project, but any future maintenance would be uh, Friends of the Riverfront's responsibility. In, in other words, these signs will become part of the, the larger trail system that, that, that they maintain. And uh, so um, at the time, uh, uh, Downtown Partnership said that they may follow up directly with Friends of the Riverfront uh, to see if if what their thoughts were on, on maintenance, but I, I do not know if they actually did that. Um, when we followed up recently last month to get a support letter from the uh, Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership, um, the, the staff head who was uh, leading the effort in, in January had been replaced, and uh, the new head of that, of that group uh, did not have further follow-up comments in that regard for us when you provided that letter. <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Abdullah, does your hand still up for another Yeah, comment? I just have one uh, comment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, obviously, as he stated, it's not going to occur, you know, with these signs, but uh, I just wanted to make the comment that it would be nice if there was some kind of technological means, like a QR code or something like that, where a person who's blind could actually use, uh, you know, uh, a, a smartphone handheld device to actually scan a code that would take them to a website mm -hmm. that would actually break down the sign for that individual to make it accessible. So that's just something I would recommend if it's possible to, you know, include that in the future, uh, future signs that would really be helpful because you know, obviously a person who's blind, deaf, et cetera, you know, they're also members of the public and, you know, we want to make sure we're including them as well in, in terms of uh, this this public uh, display, so to speak. Absolutely. I might actually follow up on that comment with um, not just uh, physical disabilities, but also um, language accessibility and thinking about uh, folks who speak and read in different languages. I do think as a suggestion in the future, particularly for Friends of the Riverfront who um, would be hosting and maintaining these um, signs, I guess one question, I don't know if there is a online kind of um, sister component to these signs. I assume that like you'd be able to go to Friends of the Riverfront's website and find similar information about these signs or is this information only at the locale if if you know you may not know that i don't believe there is such a site uh and you know that's in the past this this project is in part sponsored by pindot and in the past when we've done signs elsewhere uh for pindot projects they've typically not included qr codes because they had um some issues with with the web addresses being hacked, but also there's the the larger concern they have with the need to host and maintain that information over time, you know, and, and these signs typically are around 10 to 20 years, and uh, they quite often, to be frank, don't don't have the, the staff to maintain those websites for that duration. Uh, so, you know, that's sort of some background on why we typically don't put QR codes, but but I do understand and recognize technology is changing and, and maybe there's um, some better solutions in the future that can be come up with uh, where QR codes can be supported. Yeah, absolutely. Even if they were to go to a static like text website that wouldn't change for those 20 years and maybe mm -hmm. like with different languages and things. And I do think as a future recommendation, um, and maybe just in partnership with the Friends of the Riverfront, it seems like something, if they're going to have a website and they're managing the maintenance of the, the, the signs and things, um, it's 
the the cost of of adding a, a static page that just has like text mm -hmm. um, accessibility might not be as um, cost prohibitive as like trying to install and maintain Braille on every sign and over time and upgrade that kind of thing. So I do think it's valuable to have these comments on public record. And um, with that, we might open it up to public comment. And I do not see any hands raised for public comment. Are there any other questions or comments from the commission before we open up for a vote? All right. Is there a motion to um, vote on this proposal? I'll make a motion. Wonderful. Is there a second? Second. And that was a motion for approval. For approval. Yes, correct. Yes. All right. Uh, roll call for that motion. Board? Aye. Abdullah? In favor, yes. Carver? Aye. Ziegler? Aye. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. And with that, the motion passes. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the agenda, as we switch up the Zoom rooms, is the outdoor dining program standards from the Urban Redevelopment Authority. And we should have uh, Josette Fitzgibbons, um, Katie Weddick, and Kristen Saunders. This was given preliminary review in April of 2023, um, and it is applying as a standard. Um, whenever the applicants are ready, uh, the commission has has reviewed your entire package, so no need to go through everything, but if you have any updates or introduction to share. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I am Josette Fitzgibbons. I am the um, manager of business district services for the URA. And um, excuse my puppy dog here. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so this program is something I'm going to give. A, I'm going to give a very quick overview and then introduce um, our other panelists um, to answer any questions that you might have. Um, as I, I think you know, this program was was developed in response to the issues that we had with the COVID pandemic of, of restaurants not being able to do, basically do their business as um, their standard business indoors and having to move outdoors, particularly in the, the warmer weather months. Uh, we did at the URA, we did receive some funding through the American Rescue Plan Act to uh, give grants to our uh, business district organizations to help their businesses with this uh, activity to um, do the 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 decks and the the dividers and all of the things that that go into um, having a safe outdoor dining space. So what we wanted to do as part of our program is um, we're working with Kristen Saunders at Tool Design, who is also on this call, um, to come up with a basically a kit of parts, which is what we've we've sent you all for review, and that is that is both aesthetically acceptable and affordable to the individual businesses um, as they're as they're doing this work. Uh, this will be this the standards will be available to any businesses whether or not they're part of a of a grant program. So we wanted to make the process easier and also um, make the whole the whole permitting process easier for more accessible for a business so that when they wanted to do outdoor dining, if they were following the standards, obviously, then they wouldn't, they would just have to go through the, the standard permitting and not, um, not come through uh, the commission each time they wanted to, to um, do an outdoor dining um, 
structure. And this, what we're really doing through this is um, providing businesses with an affordable way to expand their business um, to most of our restaurants that we work with at the URA are still in recovery from the COVID pandemic, even though we feel like we're a year or two out of it. Um, they're still recouping the costs, getting over the, you know, the being closed for so long. So this is a way that we can, we can still continue to help our businesses to be able to, um, you know, expand their seating, be able to do their, do their work outside and do it in a way that's not cost prohibitive. Um, so at this point, I'm, I, we also have with us Kristen Saunders from Tool Design, as well as Katie Wedick from Domi. Um, we have worked with Domi closely through this whole process, as well as working within the community. So I think we'll just open it up to your questions um, and any comments that you might have. Thank you. I'm going to directly refer to the preliminary review comments, um, specifically uh, one comment by Commissioner Carver around the Jersey barriers and um, the materiality of them, as well as the corrugated metal roofing. Um, can do you have any feedback for that comment and or uh, Commissioner Carver, do you have any um, clarifications or um, additions to your comment? Just that I think um, there there was a response by the design team on my comments, so uh, I did uh, look at those and take those into consideration. And um, I, I certainly understand um, the the intent behind them. And so I'm wondering right now. There's uh, in order because it's a standard. Uh, I know you don't want to be too prescriptive, but I think if there isn't some um, direction on finish, then it potentially leaves us open to having raw materials on the street, which I think could be fairly unsightly. So uh, could there be consideration for um, requiring that the two by fours or whatever exposed would be painted or stained um, and uh, some other treatment, uh, the Jersey barriers? I think I'll Leave that up to either Kristen or Katie. I'm I'm happy to jump in and say that the I'm Kristen by the way, um, uh, the consultant working on the project. I'm happy to jump in and say I think that is a great idea. Um, I was just in D.C. two weeks ago, and they do use a lot of Jersey barriers to border their, you know, they also have a high level of design for their streetscape and for these temporary installations, they do use a lot of Jersey barriers, but they do um, paint them either like a standard black or some of them have some pretty interesting murals and things. Um, this is the lowest barrier to entry, bar barrier to entry um, uh, installation. Um, so it would be kind of the, you know, least impactful for the business. Um, but yeah, I think requ requiring people to paint the Jersey barrier seems reasonable, um, but I'll let maybe Domi give that the final okay. Um, and I did want to note that it's not a corrugated metal roof. We were calling for a corrugated plastic, so it would let some light through. Um, and we did look at options to kind of bring that roof down within the, um, within the depth of the roof itself, but that would require, we couldn't find a great kind of um, easily accessible gutter system uh, to make that work in a way that people could still build it with materials that are kind of available in the city of Pittsburgh without fabricating something custom. So um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I, I do think it's a good idea to require a finish. Um, I didn't know if Domi or Josette, if you have any thoughts on that, but um, Maybe with Domi, I don't have any concerns. I think our goal is really just to get some sort of standard that Art Commission is good with so that we don't have to have, you know, every applicant coming through Art Commission individually. And so if that's what Art Commission is asking for, then I don't see that being a problem. I, it, Justin, to follow up to that, I would say maybe a useful resource for applicants um, might be a list of 
various artist collectives we have here in Pittsburgh, if they are considering doing a treatment um, or mural, like having someone, oftentimes that's hard for a business owner to be like, oh, I need an artist, you know, making it really easy to build that relationship and then um, kind of letting it go from there and let the market forces do what they do. But maybe that could be something that um, applicants for this kind of um, uh, barrier receive with uh, the answer to their application. Yeah. I believe you are on mute. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, we can certainly do that. Wonderful. The other comments um, uh, revolved around the traffic, vehicular traffic, um, mostly for public uh, edification going through these. Commissioner Winston, did you ha were you um, satisfied with the answer or did you have any follow-up questions around uh, those concerns about vehicular traffic and the barriers being sufficient protection? See here. I call on someone who's not here. Oops, of course. Um, sorry about that. Um, it looks like Domi, Domi, um, and I apologize. I have Katie, can you, do you mind speaking on that just a little bit? Sure. Um, so I've only been with Domi about two and a half months now, but um, other folks in Domi before me were working on outdoor guidelines. And so working closely with cities across the country and seeing what they were doing in terms of barriers. And so this is in part why um, you do have the Jersey barrier in there. And then every time one of these um, platforms is submitted, it will be reviewed by Domi. And so we'll be making sure, you know, what are the speeds of the street? What barriers are where? You know, what we care most about is kind of the barrier that's facing the oncoming traffic. So if someone would kind of swerve, they'd be hitting a barrier. You see on the screen now having this wheel stop. So we require those wheel stops to separate this kind of outdoor dining parking space from normal parking and loading. Um, so the barriers shown here are kind of in line with what's happening across the country. Thanks for that. Um, and then it looks like there was a comment about uh, propane and the heating units. It seems like that was answered. Um, Commissioner Ziegler, do you have any follow-up questions or feedback? Um, and that was in reference to the heaters, I believe, um, and the, uh, the requirements and about heating, sheathing, and lighting, they would have to be included um, in the streetscape. With that, are there any public comments? Uh, we do not have any hands raised for public comment. Wonderful. And are there, is there a motion for approval? Can I make a motion, a conditional motion, Tony, remind me? Um, to incorporate a finish on the Jersey barrier and exposed wood components. Uh, so approval with the condition that Jersey barriers be given, be Jersey barriers and exposed wood be given a finish. Correct. Mm -hmm. Painted or stained. Okay. May I add the con another one that um, the standard come with an appendix of contact information for artist um uh, uh, artists in pittsburgh local artists in pittsburgh i think who would be the best i guess it would be uh, the art commission but um and we can work together to assemble that list but i'm sure it exists and we can get that from someone uh, yeah our our uh office can can work with them on on the best way to provide recommendations Okay, so to consolidate that, I will make a motion for approval with the following conditions. Finish, paint, or stain on Jersey barriers and exposed wood, as well as an appendix to guide potential artist selection or participation. May I second that? Am I allowed to? No. Yes. Am I? Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> I'll second. All right. Uh, roll call for that uh, motion. Ford? Aye. 
Abdullah? Yes, in favor. Carver? Aye. Declare. Uh, Commissioner Ziegler, I didn't hear that. Oh, she I answered, but she was muted. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, sorry about that. Thank you. Right. Wonderful. And with that, um, the motion passes. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Very exciting thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Moving right along. Um, the fourth and final excuse me, hearing and action agenda item is the Anderson Playground renovation presented by Department of Public Works. And we should have uh, Andrea Ketzel, and this was given a preliminary review in March of 2023. Hi, good afternoon. Um, sorry, I missed the, the intro. Did you, you, you said that we were given preliminary approval? Uh, yes, it, well, it was given a preliminary review, no no decisions attached to that. Um, the commissioners have you know, reviewed your materials, so if you'd like to give any kind of update or um, additional explanation, please do so now. Um, otherwise, we can go right to discussion and questions. Sure. Um, so I just wanted to take some time to address uh, a few of the question or the questions and comments that we got through preliminary review. Um, I'm not sure if we have any other images of the playground. Um, like there were, yeah, let's keep that up. That's a little bit better to look at than the site plan. Okay, so um, I, I only received comments from Commissioner Carver and Commissioner Ziegler. Um, Commissioner Carver, you uh, asked that we introduce the seat wall into option two um, to increase the delineation of the play areas and provide more seating. Um, and so that's that's exactly what we did in, in this um, final iteration. We, we sort of combined the two concepts, including uh, the seat walls that you see in the center between the swings and the two to five area and five to 12 area. Uh, you had an additional comment around um, the tunnel equipment that we were showing for the the two to five age children um, and some concerns around the safety of that piece of equipment. Um, we received back that it was noted that safety and ADA are outside of the uh, commission's review criteria. Um, but I just wanted to address that and, and bring to your awareness that the, the tunnels are no longer being proposed uh, as part of the design. Um, Commissioner Ziegler uh, had a few comments um, suggesting we mix both backless and backed interior seating. Um, unfortunately, this rendering does not show the benches, but we I think I did include some examples of what the benches will look like. Uh, we're working with Urban Tree to uh, design a bench that has half of of the bench will be backed and the other half is backless. So there will be the option to have to sit, you know, in either location. Um, if you've been to the super playground, uh, there's a similar design bench there. Um, uh, you also asked the materiality of the play surface. So that's going to be the poured in place surfacing. Um, you asked why the bike path was eliminated um, that's connecting the playground to the um, bridge and the tunnel, that bike path is actually not being eliminated. It's going to stay as is, and um, it's not part of the scope of work for this project, but we're not um, touching it either. I think it, it shows up as an existing condition, and so that's why you're not seeing it on the plans. Um, you asked the material underneath the stumps uh, and the benches. So for the benches, those will sit on concrete pads and the stump steppers are going to be on the perimeter of some planting beds that will have mulch uh, underneath them and plants to the interior. Um, you also suggested uh, picnic tables in the shade as well as making sure that they adjoin uh, the other paved surfaces, so there's not grass in between. And uh, I think you'll see in the site plan that was previously up that we did address that um, in this final design. 
Um, and then another uh, comment around accessibility, um, which it, again is not part of the commission's criteria, but I'm happy to address it um, once we get into discussion of the play equipment and, and some of the revisions that we've made since preliminary. Um, so that's that's the extent of the comments. And so I'm happy to um, open it up to conversation and additional questions. I just wanted to clarify for the record that those um, initial comments were from uh, Commissioner Winston and uh, not not me. Just okay. Uh, that's good to know. They show up as yeah. uh, under your name. Uh, for okay. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Sure. Oh, I think there's actually one comment before um, uh, Commissioner Winston. That's Lisa's nose. Um, okay, really maybe. exciting. <laughs> that <was> awesome. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> As are my thoughts, um, I'm very excited about how this turned out and it just looks really exciting and great. So um, I, I had no comments additionally. Um, any other commissioners president? Uh, Commissioner Abdul, I know you didn't, um, you may not have been able to submit written comment. Um, did you have any comments presently? I did cut someone off. I heard someone talking. No? I think so. Uh, okay. I, I had a, uh, a question. Oh, okay, please. So uh, when is, is a really basic question, really simple. When is the proposed project supposed to be or come to completion? What's, what's the ETA on that? So once um, we hopefully receive approval today, I'll be able to place the order for the equipment. Um, it does come from overseas, so it takes quite a while to get here. We have removed already the existing playground because it was around 25 years old and really not safe uh, to play on anymore. So in some ways we have started some work. Um, we're just waiting for you know these approvals to place orders and then get the construction set out to bid. So I'm hoping to have some action, at least on the site work uh, this summer and wrapped up by next spring. And you said it's coming from overseas. Uh yeah. Where where at? I'm just curious. Um, so the the playground equipment is from a company called Compan, and I believe it comes from Germany. It's somewhere in Europe. I'm sorry, I, I don't know the exact country. Or... Oh, that's fine. Just and, and good to know. Interesting. Thank yeah. you. Sure. If you want, I can talk a little bit about accessibility of some of the pieces that we selected. Um, the uh, I'm not sure how to describe the, the when you're in the five to 12 space, uh, you can see the dinosaur in the background and the um, kind of rope swing um, to the left of that. And the foreground is um, what's called, I believe an adventure dome. And it has a number of um, different sensory uh, items at the bottom that are ground level so that a child in a wheelchair or with um, mobility issues would be able to access those at the ground level. Um, we are also including um, the nest swing um, and the swing with me swing on our swing set. So those are both intended to be inclusive pieces. Um, I may also swap out um, one or two of the swings for the um, traditional ADA swings that we have throughout uh, a number of our playgrounds. Um, and then um, I think those are kind of the, the specialty pieces, but of course we have to meet all of the requirements for ADA. So uh, for every uh, piece of equipment that's up in the air, there's a certain number that of pieces that have to be at ground level. Thanks for sharing that information. Sure. This is, um, I have one question that you may not know, maybe it's the wrong person. Um, the plant palette, the, um, when we are planting trees and doing things in public spaces, is there any opportunity for plant identification? Um, like, I know it's like the tiniest sign, but understanding what's in the park, what's growing in the park. I don't know if that was thought about or even that's even a part 
Yeah, how, that, um, sorry, go ahead. No, oh, please, please. Okay. I'm rambling. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, it would be cool on this project because I think, uh, you know, we are planning to use some different um, plant material that are a bit prehistoric as well. So ferns and things like that, that have been around since since the dinosaurs. So it would be cool, I think, to include some signage to at least identify that. Um, in terms of just larger scale identification, I know our forestry department is working on um, standardizing some signage for our arboretums. So, you know, once that's done, hopefully we can kind of carry that through to some other parts as well. Thanks for that. But I really like that idea. So maybe we can um, find a way to identify some of the plants in the park as well. I feel like a lot of toddler parents would be thankful. To okay. Go <laughs> find the blank. Um, any closing comments and uh, questions? No, just to re reiterate my okay. preliminary comment, it is an exciting project to do this in your presentation. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And compound is from Denmark. I just it just hit me. <laughs> None of those. Yeah, no, really exciting. Um, is there a motion for approval? I motion for approval. Wonderful. Is there a second? A second. All right. Roll call for that approval. Board. Aye. Abdullah. Yes, in favor. Harbor. Aye. See clear. Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Wonderful. And that concludes the hearing and action portion of our agenda. We are now moving to the director's report. All right. Uh, I see uh, we have Director Abrams on here. Director, would you care to say anything or shall I go right ahead? Um, I was just gonna say the one thing um, and let you deal with the other <laughs> other things, Tony. I know that um, if many of you may not know, but um, Sarah Minert, um, our assistant director has left the city and we are very saddened by that. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that we did put out a, um, a uh, job position notice um, to have a replacement filled that position. Hopefully we have a 30 day notice for that. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we will have interviews and get somebody on board to replace her. She's, she's not replaceable, but we need somebody in here to do some work. And we're looking specifically to really kind of um, support a lot of the design work, right? We have you know expertise in historic preservation, as well as public art, we're looking for the design aspects of it. So, um, and that's kind of something that we've added to the job description. So it's online if you want to take a look at it and if you want to share it with folks. Um, and I will leave the rest of the director's report to Tony. I know he has a lot to tell you. So thank you. Thank you, Director Abrams. Yeah, and uh, and you know, big thanks to uh, Sarah Minert, who was you know instrumental in many things in the division, including the. Um, getting this kind of reformatted commission uh, off the ground this year. Um, uh, thanks also to uh, uh, my colleagues in the Department of City Planning, Amy and Sharon, who are working in the background here, um, <laughs> since I'm, I'm the only one in the uh, Public History Art and Design Division at the moment. Uh, and I mentioned this at the at the beginning uh, of the hearing, but you know, formal welcome um, to Commissioner uh, Ali Abdullah. Um, you know, uh, would you, Commissioner, would you care to um, introduce yourself uh, to the other commissioners? Uh, yeah, so uh, as you already know, my name is Ali Abdullah. I work for the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh. At the Hous Housing Authority City of Pittsburgh, I'm the Disability Compliance Administrator. Uh, and uh, I'm not, not sure what else to share about myself, but uh Accessibility, as you already know, is a big thing for me because I've asked a number of accessibility questions, and I'm sure that'll be a continuing theme with me. Um, and I'm just, you know, really interested, humble, honored to be a part of this commission. And I look forward to, you know, continued uh, service, continued meetings with you all. Um, I, I'm looking to you all, I guess, for leadership in terms of, you know, this this type of work that we're doing. Thank you. 
So thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, I, I do just want to note here that uh, I believe we had some issues with streaming to YouTube at the beginning of today's hearing. So if anyone um, is joining and was listening to that, we will have uh, the, the meeting is recorded separately. So we will have that uploaded to YouTube. So um, after today, we will have the full um, recording up there if anything was missed. Uh, let's see. I wanted to uh, mention um, that in the correspondence um, sort of email that was sent out yesterday, I noted to the commission that we did have um, three over-the-counter reviews. Um, this is inclusive of the entire year so far. Usually they're done by month, um, but as we're sort of playing catch up with getting the commission into place, they they were all stacked into this update. Uh, those are available for review, um, and you can reach out to me if there's any questions about that. Uh, I did also mention in yesterday's correspondence that um, our annual procedural meeting um, is will be rescheduled to July um, due to uh, there not being anyone in the in the division who who will be around on the date that we had had it scheduled originally. That meeting is um, not to review any. Uh, there, there's no discussion about um, public applications uh, at that meeting. It is strictly to discuss um, the sort of process that we have in place for the commission. Um, so if you have any uh, notes that come up between now and then regarding the process of reviewing, um, meeting, et cetera, we'd be happy for the feedback then. Uh, my only other... Uh, note right now is I wanted to just update the commission that um, our equity audit of the city's collection of public art uh, monuments and memorials had its kickoff with our advisory committee this week. Uh, we have uh, seven really awesome um, community members as part of the advisory committee and we have uh, our uh, researcher and uh, that there will be updates to the city's uh, engage page on the city collection equity audit shortly um, if you would like details about that that's really all i have so if any commissioners have uh any uh last thoughts or anything to bring up um you can do it otherwise good for the day um this is angie Marti oh excuse me go ahead Hi, um, this is Angie standing in for Director Lucas with Domi. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to uh, thank the commission for um, your review and thoughtful comments of um, the outdoor dining platforms. Um, Domi is the city department that wrote those guidelines. So we think of it as like, you know, setting the, the standards for um, the footprint of it, but the URA um, really and their consultant um, did an excellent job, I think, fleshing that out into practical guidelines that can be picked up by um, businesses um, to actually, you know, improve the public space. So thank you guys for being a part of that process. And uh, thank you, Tony, for um, your assistance in getting, I think, this commission's first uh, city standard um, through the, the process. So we look forward to doing more. <laughs> thank you, Angie. Any other comments from commissioners? No Wanted comments. to welcome Commissioner Abdullah. Welcome. No comments from me. <laughs> I, I, what did you say? I, I missed what you said. I, was, I, I think we were talking at the same time. I apologize. Just wanted to welcome you. Oh, thank you so much. With my motorcycle <laughs> traffic behind me, but yes, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Welcome. Um, thank you all for such a great meeting. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, if there are no outstanding comments, I guess we can call for the close of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And at 5.06, we are adjourned. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye, Thank all. you, Commissioners. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a good evening.